hello and welcome to the uh, webinar of the Foresight Center at the Parliament of Estonia. So I'm greeting you here by the uh, by the Parliament. It's a uh, sunny spring day. Um, still no green leaves, but we're really waiting for spring. I'm very glad to have you all here today. My name is Johanna Vallistu, and I work as an expert at the uh, Foresight Center. And I will be today moderating this uh, webinar. Uh, so a bit of a background for this webinar. In 2018, we published the Future of Work Scenarios for Estonia. And uh, today's webinar is part of our follow-up activities as part of uh, revising the scenarios in the context of COVID crisis. As we have all experienced, uh, certain trends have been amplified over the past year. And the uncertainty on um, how and where we will work has increased. And especially we see this ten tendency of um, increasing virtual work, uh, which will probably encourage more own account work and uh, self-employment um, to, uh, to emerge. And we see less uh, uh, work relationships tied to a, a certain employer and uh, even maybe less uh, work tied to a certain country or a region. Uh, so today, um, we will discuss a very important topic, which is the future of social protection. And um, more specifically, we will look at the topic of individual accounts. Uh, individual accounts are, of course, not a new thing per se, and they have been around for a while. Um, examples include, uh, for example, savings account to fund one's retirement or health, uh, for example, in the USA or Australia. Uh, but the use of these specialist accounts are seen as a typical for a very liberal social security system and they have been also criticized for their lack of solidarity and lack of uh, redistribution. Uh, however, given the current trends, uh, the, the current trends do imply that one option for governments who are looking for tightening their social security net and seeking solutions for this uh, kind of atypical workers is to um, build their social security system increasingly around attaching these uh, social rights to the person directly uh, using these kinds of accounts. So uh, public sector digitalization and uh, data driven societies make us wonder whether <clears throat> uh, these kinds of accounts or more like holistic accounts, we call them life accounts or activity accounts, whether they could help uh, uh, governments to cope uh, or to help people better with uh, adjusting to this uh, fast pace of the labor markets. Uh, so <clears throat> today, uh, even though we look at the topic of individual accounts, we will go beyond mere savings accounts. And uh, we have two extremely interesting cases ahead. One of them is a concept, um, a hypothetical proposal of an account. And uh, the other presentation is about a real life example from France. So I'm very grateful and honored to have us, uh, to have with us today two presenters and two discussions. So firstly, uh, let me introduce you Elina Lepomäki uh, from Finland, who is a member of the Finnish parliament. And she will introduce us the idea of the uh, life account. And uh, hello, 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 Elina. Uh, and uh, I'm I'm very happy that Elina is back because uh, she was also here in 2019, uh, and um, we're very interested uh, to hear what has happened uh, with the idea of life account in between, and to hear about this very interesting concept again. Uh, just to give an overview of, of the whole uh, webinar, then uh, after Elina's presentation, our second presenter will be uh, Nicole Magui-Germain. Uh, she is a specialist of labor law. Uh, hello, Nicole. Hello, nice, nice to, to meet you. Here. It's Magie, Magie Germain. Oh, I'm it's very Italian. Sorry. Okay, no, ah, no. Okay. you're welcome. Nicole you're welcome. Magie-Germain. Yes, you're right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for specifying. 
Uh, and uh, so uh, Nicole is a specialist of labor law, and she's also a senior lecturer at the uh, Pantheon Sorbonne University in France. And uh, she has written about uh, the subject that she will be presenting today. She has also been part of the working group for the government, and the subject will be the French activity account, uh, which is a very interesting real life example that we have followed with great interest uh, thus far. And um, after Nicole's presentation, we will have two discussants presenting their ideas, takeaways from these presentations, and hopefully also putting these things into, uh, into the Estonian context. So um, I will introduce you Vina Sikut. Uh, she is a member of the Estonian parliament, and she has previously been also the Minister of Health and Labor. And our second discussant, Jan Villasar, is uh, the chairman of the Foresight Council, but more import importantly, um, a successful entrepreneur and uh, a person who has been thinking a lot about how the social security system should be built up. Um, as for the build up of the, of the webinar, I invite you all to participate. I invite all the uh, listeners to participate in the Q&A session. So there is a possibility to ask questions on, a, on, on an ongoing basis. And if our dear presenters do have a chance to look at them, they have a chance to respond. But uh, uh, don't be disappointed if your question doesn't get uh, responded in a written way. I will also pick up uh, the most interesting questions and I will ask some of them straight after the, each presentation. But also we will have um, hopefully a small a round of discussion after all the presentations and, um, and discussions. And we will end at uh, 2.30 p.m. So um, without further ado, uh, Elina, are you ready to, to present? Uh, I could start sharing your slides. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, unfortunately, I do have some tech technological issues. So hopefully you can hear me now. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. And uh... oh, that's that's fantastic. I would just keep um, since um, if, if you, Johanna, can help me with the slides, then uh, I will just keep the camera off for the time being. Um, and we will try to resolve this. Um, as digital as we are these days, but the funny thing is that uh, in Parliament we have actually prohibited Zoom, so um, I will have had to find different ways of organizing this. Um, and plus we are in the process of uh, budget negotiations, so it's, it's a pretty busy time, but, but thank you so much for having me and uh, I will walk you now through um, a short uh, or through a short presentation of the life account and uh, happy to, to participate also in the debate and discussion um, if there remains time. But uh, please, let's um, just move on. So, <clears throat> so we can take the next slide. So the, the main idea um, behind the life account, uh, the concept which I developed uh, back in the day, um, 2013, was that um, we would in, we would need um, better social protection for people um, in the ongoing change um, or the structural change we are in. So as we all know, um, we have moved from, an, from a mostly industrialized world into more of a knowledge economy. And uh, the pace of this change will only um, increase with uh, automation, with robotization, with artificial intelligence in general, and also the types of work have changed. So um, people less in, than, than um, only a few years ago and especially decades ago are involved in, in um, full-time and lifelong careers, but um, not only young people, but also middle-aged people and why not the elderly as well, participate in, in the so-called sharing economy where people tend to not just offer, but also buy, of course, uh, micro tasks such as Uber or similar 
similar um, platforms which which um, are um, <clears throat> facilitating this this kind of work. Let's just move on. So the con concept behind the life account is is that it's a uh, life cycle model for not just for social protection but for other things as well, which um, I will present to you shortly. So each life account has an initial capital. So say an 18 year old um, gets his or her life account, then it would um, have an initial amount of money, which is uh, at the beginning, it's just virtual money in the sense that you wouldn't be able to take it out completely. Um, all of the numbers which I'm going to present in this presentation are just examples. So don't get too much stuck into them, but um, in order to give you an idea of the magnitude, then the initial capital could be um, around 20,000 euros. And the idea behind this life cycle model is obviously that uh, at the end of uh, your working career um, at retirement, you would be able to keep the capital which you have been able to uh, accumulate on your account. And should there be a negative balance, which is completely possible also in today's welfare societies where um, there are people and groups of people who during their life cycles um, get more social benefits than they pay in taxes. And uh, that's fair enough. It's the idea of the distribution within the welfare state that, um, that not everybody kind of uh, pays as much taxes as, as receives um, something else or receives transfers. Um, so in the life account model, the idea is that if, if the account balance was negative at retirement, then it's not, uh, you know, physical debt, it, it will simply be written off. Okay, let's take the next slide, please. Oh, okay, yeah. So if we move on to the first part, yes. So let's take the benefit bit, so the social security bit of the model. Um, the, the idea is that each month, if the account balance is at initial capital or less. So say you have 10,000 left or something like that, um, then you only can withdraw up to 600 euros or up to a certain limit each month. And once you withdraw money from the life account, then at the same go, you pay your income tax. So basically the money which is on the account is gross money. So it is money that hasn't been taxed yet which provides you also with an incentive to um, save money on the account if, if only possible. And the idea is that um, even though you can withdraw the 600 euros or up to 600 euros, if you only need 300, then you do it and you can top, top up your income with, with um, income from work or from entrepreneurship or from wherever. And it doesn't reduce the amount that you can withdraw from the life account um, and um, actually all the money that you have on the account, which is on top of the 20,000 euros. So on top of the, uh, or in excess of the initial capital, which was uh, saved on the account, that money you can withdraw any day, but then you just pay your taxes. Okay, let's move on. The, the life account is funded by um, transferring gross salary payments onto the account. So for example, 10% of your gross salary would always each month automatically be transferred onto the account. It's not an extra tax because um, each month you're still, whatever the situation you are, you are able to withdraw at least or, or up to those 600 euros. And uh, as already mentioned, if, if you have extra savings on the account, which are um, larger than or which are in excess of the initial capital, say you have 30,000 euros in the account, the 10,000 which you have saved on top of the initial capital, you can withdraw any day, but then you just pay your taxes. So the idea is that you can also make voluntary savings uh, onto the account and transfer money onto the account at your will. So the third part is the exchange bit. So the life account is not only a um, vehicle for social protection, but it's also a platform for 
um, the sharing economy and for um, providing and also um, consuming micro tasks. So for example, you are an entrepreneur or you have uh, your, your great business idea, um, but you wouldn't necessarily have the possibility right now to set up a proper company um, and you want to test out your, your um, company or your business idea um, while still working somewhere else, for example. Then you might, with the use of the life account, which makes, first of all, the bureaucracy of a small um, entrepreneur very, very um, neat and easy. You can um, easily buy services from other people, so-called micro-tasks, by just uh, transferring money from your life account to their life accounts. So, for example, um, if I wanted to buy um, a web website service from, from somebody, a friend of mine who, who does it, uh, and I would transfer, say, we agree, 500 euros on, on her account, um, then the system takes automatically care of uh, all uh, obligatory payments uh, of an entre of an entrepreneur or of a of um, um, uh, or which are statutory um, payments such as insurances which you have typically have to pay when you when you buy somebody's labor so that is automatically taken care of and what happens at the other end so the person I have bought the web page from uh, when she receives the 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 500 euros which I have sent um, net of the um, national insurances, which typically in each system are, are paid, then he or she can withdraw um, the money at their will from the life account when they want, uh, and they just pay the taxes then. So the idea is that you would make the exchange like this much, much easier. Um, and uh, you would allow people who participate in the sharing economy um, or in the platform economy to be socially protected and uh, make the transfer of money um, very, very easy between um, service providers and their clients. And um, this would also reduce the amount of uh, the shadow economy. Okay, let's move on. And uh, finally, the part four of the life account is that it can also be used for topping up your pensions, for making extra save savings and investment. So the idea is that the money which you have on the account, which is in excess of the initial capital, that's your money, uh, even though it's gross taxes yet, so you haven't paid your income tax on it, but the money which is... Um, um, uh, which, which you have saved on the account, which is in excess of the initial capital, you can uh, freely invest. And the idea is, again, um, if you sell, for example, your shares or whatever you have invested in, uh, only then when you take the money from the life account, only then when you withdraw, you pay your taxes. So you can um, easily um, accumulate extra savings and extra pension, uh, what you, whatever you want to use it for on, to, on the account. And, uh, and yeah, it, it kind of transfers the situation when taxes are, are paid um, into a situation where, where something is consumed. So when you, you, know, when, you take when you take money out of the life account, that's when you pay taxes. So instead of taxing labor or entrepreneurship, you in a society with the life account would be rather taxing consumption, which is also important when making the shift into a more climate neutral um, society. Let's move on. And finally, just as a thought, um, as, an, as an idea for the evolution and the development of the European Union, um, instead of transferring money between, um, between national governments and member states, why not use the life account as a um, model for a social Europe where we would take care of the people instead of 
or not instead of, but uh, rather take care of the people than um, directly uh, than, than their national parliaments or the national governments. So the idea would be that you could easily with the life account also transfer your, your social security from one European country to the next, which these days is still a little bit of a hassle. I have myself worked and lived in four different EU countries and every time you move around, um, you have to, a lot of bureaucracy to take care of, and you don't necessarily at the beginning know uh, what your social protection is, and, and so on and so forth. And plus, you at the end of the day wouldn't necessarily know who, if, if anybody is going to pay your pension. So with the life account, um, it would be easy to, to take your pension just with you if, if you uh, move from one country to the next. And as we all know, in even today, but especially in the future, you wouldn't necessarily need to physically move from one country to the next if you work in another country than where you're a resident. So the life account could be easily used for, for, for um, that purpose as well. Okay. And then we have, I guess, my last slide, which just tells you that so much that I'm very thankful for your attention. And if you need any more information, um, these are my contact details and uh, happy to stick around for a bit for, for some questions. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Elina. Uh, that was a very interesting uh, presentation. Let me see uh, what is, my, okay. I see that there is an example that has been given in the Q&A. Mm, everyone can, uh, can read at the moment. Uh, but uh, my uh, question uh, to you um, on this uh, on this idea of the life account would be that um, you have had this uh, idea for quite many years and you have written about it and you have talked about it. How has it uh, changed, uh, evolved? Uh, how has your own perception evolved uh, on this idea? And has it become now, um, has the reception of the idea been, uh, been changed in recent times of um, um, influenced by COVID crisis, or as you mentioned, um, the need uh, for more portable social security? What has been the development of the life account idea? Yeah, thank you so much for the question. Um, well, first of all, um, in Finland, we have currently um, a project running, um, which um, has been sponsored by the current government and is organized uh, by um, a uh, or through a cooperation of um, of the um, what do you call it in <laughs> the organization for for health and social security. Uh, together with a professor and to, together with academia, they have simulated um, the effects of the life account on, um, uh, on, on, on data of population we have from, from people in the cohort born 1987. And uh, this, uh, the results of this study will be published in June actually. And, uh, and um, there has been an idea with, with this government to, to pilot this or test the life account. But the problem with these um, lifelong life cycle accounts are that uh, obviously if you do a two years pilot, then you don't really get much out of it because the whole idea is based on, on, on the fact that people or the circumstances of people and the situations in life change over time. And within two years, it's it's too little to capture basically any change in in, in anyone's uh, lifetime, which doesn't say that it wouldn't make any sense to pilot it, but um, but uh, uh, it could be an idea to just start implementing it uh, step by step. And uh, in fact, the social security system in Finland has moved in this direction uh, over the years. And uh, for for example, the um, the investment wallet, which is integrated into the life account was implemented uh, during the last government period. So, so basically you can, as a free individual, you can uh, make, for instance, um, savings into shares and equities. And uh, with, with that wallet or with that account, 
um, with a specific account and uh, you only pay taxes when you take money out or when you sh- when you sell not, not not then when you sell your shares but but when you actually take money out of the out of the account so that has been implemented and we have also other bits of this life account here and there implemented already uh, and plus I have been touring well now obviously um, <laughs> during the pandemic less so um, but uh, just two three weeks ago and also greetings to Nicole in France I had uh, I, I presented the life account to the French Senate's um, committee of social issues so um, I think with the COVID pandemic especially I think people do realize that we need a reform of the current welfare system and um, I'm happy to share my ideas. Thank you very much Elena. I I wish you a good luck and of course uh, I'm always admiring Finland for uh, their willingness uh, to do the experimental policy making and for thoroughly analyzing everything so I I very much uh, hope that it doesn't stay only um, an idea that it evolves evolves further. Um, I will also draw your attention to our Q&A. There are some questions coming in. If you have a chance, you can look at these these, uh, questions and uh, type an answer. But um, I myself will ask some more questions after we have uh, ended the uh, presentations and and discussions. So uh, I would now move on to Nicole. Uh, Nicole, if you are ready, I would be uh, utmost glad to hear about uh, the uh, French activity account, which is, uh, which has been uh, started already for, uh, I I think, five years ago, right? Or maybe even more. So the floor is yours, Nicole. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, can you see my show slide? It's, yes, we yeah, can see it's good. and we can Good hear. for you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your invitation. I'm going to try to speak of the French personal account of activity, even to translate it compte personnel d'activité. It's quite, I think, difficult, but terms are very important. I speak, we speak about person and not individual. And I think it's a difference. A difference is very important in the French uh, legal framework. So uh, I'm gonna try to (laughs) explain you what is a French personal account of activity. Of course, I won't be able to give all the details. It's complicated, but I will try to make it the clearest as I can. (laughs) I hope it will be. As you told, it's a very recent uh, device created by law. In uh, 2016, uh, in a law concerning work, modernization, and social dialogue and security of path career, I try to translate as um, as good as possible as I can. I hope it's a good translation. Um, but what is important, it has been reviewed uh, two years later by another act, another law, which uh, entitled. The title is, oh, sorry, uh, for freedom to choose one's professional future. So I think you've got um, a good sum up of the trends about what could be CPA, an individualization device or something more collective. I will try to explain it uh, further. Uh, When you read, the text of the law, you see that the link is made between the CPA, the device, and the new social pattern at the digital age. So it means that even if the device is now in dormancy, it uh, the start of something that is going on, but it w- we will have many years, maybe a decade, before seeing what uh, we can have, but it's um, it's very representative of 
the way of thinking of the politician and the political party. Uh, they want to, it's the CPA is announcing changes. Uh, in Labour Code, it has been codified in a section devoted to the employment. And it's very important because you don't find the CPA in uh, Social Security Code. It's codified in Labour Code. So it means that maybe now, nowadays, today, the CPA is shown as a way to preserve employment, but how? <laughs> that is certainly a question. <laughs> if I try to explain the different, different purposes of the CPA, uh, according to the way it has been codified in Labour Code, I can see, and maybe it's a specificity, uh, particularly of the French uh, system, it's um, gather different aims, different purposes. Uh, if I read the purposes of the personal account of activity is to strengthen by the use of the rights registered therein, the autonomy and freedom of action of its holder. This is uh, individual approach. Of course, the CPA is written in an individual approach, but it's also to secure his or her career path by removing obstacles of mobility. It's a tool for flexibility, for a wider flexibility, but it also cont contributes to the right to professional qualification. So we have both individualization of the use of social rights um, purposes, which is also to increase flexibility, but also allow to allow personal development and social promotion. And on the other hand, personal account is also um, a part of collective priorities. That is very interesting, I think. Uh, both uh, side of the CPA, individualization of social rights, but also uh, rights embedded in a collective way. And you see the third uh, alinea, the holder of the personal activity account decided how to use his or her right under the conditions set in in this set in this chapter. So it means that now you can use your right, your social right, but but in a certain way that will be, that is defined in a collective way by um, trade unions, employers, organization, or by the state. That is, I think, a very special way um, chosen by uh, France. What is the CPA? I'm sorry, it's very simple, but I try to be <laughs> the clearest uh, I can. The CPA is uh, made of three legal devices. Uh, it's not yet the whole package of portable rights, what we call portable rights. I don't know if it uh, means something for you, if it's clear. But when uh, social partners signed have signed the collective agreement, they referred to the whole package. Now we have only three devices, the personal account of training, the professional account for prevention. I, even I don't know if it's a good translation. Uh, compte personnel de prévention. It's not professional prevention account. It's not the good translation. I think the translation, the, the the best translation would be professional account for prevention. Um, and it also, it's also made by the citizen commitment account. So the three devices are part of what we call the CPA. Conditions are laid down by the law CPA is open from 16 until the death of the person first. 
it was closed um, with the retirement. The law has changed and now it's open until the death of the person. Um, the person has to be employed or looking for a job or a part. Uh, um, it can concern par, uh, workers with disabilities or retired person. So it's very wide uh, CPA. The functioning. Uh, the aim of CPA is to bring together social rights acquired in time or in euro. It's important. Maybe we can exchange about this way later. And uh, acquired under different status of employment. That is a part of um, the flexibility way chosen by the CPA. It means that if you are employee and then you become self-employed or unemployed, you will keep your social rights. It aims to achieve a pulling or mutualization. I don't know if it's clear for you the concept of mutualization, but it means that you put together rights acquired, acquired differently on a different way, and then you can make a conversion of acquired rights to open new social rights. For example, to train, retire earlier, take a leave. And uh, this, um, it's a sort of what we call in France, beau commun, or I don't know if the translation common pot, <laughs> Po commun, it means that you put in a po commun, common put, different uh, social rights, and then you can use a social drawing right. Uh, if we, if I use the ex expression use uh, that, that uh, Alain Supio is uh, using. Um, for example, an employer will be able to deposit uh, days of rest or vacation on this account. It means that it can be fina uh, financing are different. They can come from private parts, employers' contribution, employees' contribution, social contribution but also for public uh, department, region, state. So there is a, a combination between public and private fundings. If I try to give you an example of this combination of different rights acquired uh, from different status, I can use the professional account of prevention in a category pace of work concerning risk factors. You can uh, earn points, you can earn rights, social rights, if you are working by night. For example, one hour of uh, job, uh, work, uh, jo job work uh, done by night, it means between midnight and 5 a.m will give you the right to earn points uh, because it's a risk factor. If you do it 120 night, nights per year. So you will accumulate, you will earn different uh, points, which then will open or will give you rights. For example, three months of exposure to one risk factor will give you one point. If you are exposed to several risk factors, you will earn two points. And then 10 points will give, will give you a reduction of 50% of working time for 90 days without loss of pay. You keep all your social rights. One Another example, one point will give you the right to have a, tra uh, a training period equal, equal to 350, 355 uh, euro. Uh, but only to um, the 
not all the training periods are open. Only the one who permits you will give you the possibility to then to go to a less exposed job. So here we see the priority given by the government when he wants to decrease the risk uh, at uh, social, um, physical risk at work. Ah, what is the future of the CPA? I, I, really, I don't know if I can <laughs> speak about the future. Uh, it's very open. If I can imagine what would be, what could be the future of the CPA, uh, I, will, uh, I will focus on the purpose of a new category that appeared in the French law which is uh, the right attached attach to the person. Uh, we knew, we knew it, we knew rights attached to the person from a civil law approach. It's very common and very ancient, but uh, the question is now, how can we transfer the theory of right attached to the person to the uh, social law? This is a real question. Why? Because um, it, from a civil uh, law approach, uh, the advantage or the interest or the, uh, the reason for using the category of the rights attached to the person is to open to a particular legal framework and give the specific pro protection to his owner. I, I list it. Uh, only uh, the holder can use the right. The rights at attached to the person are extra patrimonial rights. Out of trade, I think it's very important. Inalienable, non-transferable. They, they have a privilege from seizure. They are perpetual. This is a civil law legal framework. What could be um, a transposition to social uh, labor law, so to social law? Um, it could, CPA could contribute, could aim to develop a professional status for the people, not only for the workers or, or for the employees. It would also permit to connect social rights attached to the person with collective or general interest. I think this is a very important. The right attached to the person can open, can give her or him prerogatives. But in the French legal framework, these prerogatives are um, embedded in a general or collective interest. Um, it means that conditions for acquiring rights and also conditions for using rights are defined by the interest, another collective interest, which can be a general interest if the state is uh, defined uh, it, or collective interest if the social partner are defined it in um, collective agreement, for example. It means that the CPA aims to combine different rights, but according to the principle of solidarity, which can be national social security, for example, or professional, we can have um, sectorial uh, activity um, interest. Um, this CPA and the rights uh, combined inside the CPA are out of trade. It means that it can't exist a social rights market. You can't sell your rights. This, I think, is important and is not so obvious. Uh, if, I, if I focus on the principle of solidarity, it's is very, it is very important in the French legal framework. You have it at the basement of the French pension scheme. Uh, it, 
It's a legal mechanism which allows to activate operating principles like mutualization and fungibility of, of funding. I don't know if the concept of fungibility is very clear for everybody, but it means that because the principle of solidarity is at the basement of the CPA, then you have special rules. Um, you have to follow special rules. And the application of rules that maybe uh, the CPA allows to applicate special rules that can um, avoid, uh, um, for example, competition law uh, that use that would be applied, and to preserve a monopoly system as is the pension scheme, French pension scheme, for example. Um, and in so doing, uh, uh, combining individual approach and collective or general interest, you can make you can um, you are able to make to make certain priorities prevailing. That is very, in my point of view, very important in the French CPA. It's a legal device uh, gathering different social rights, but according to principles, lay down solidarity first and rules that must be set up. We don't know yet what is the final aim, final goal of CPA. Do we have to promote uh, equality, equity? Do you have to promote an asymmetric fungibility? I'm sorry, I think it's a little bit technical, but it's uh, very important. Um, what are we trying to recognize and establish through the CPA? Social rights, social rights attached to the person, to the status of worker, employee, all of them. It's still, a, a, I think, a question. Um, what is important to point out is the impossibility of merging different social rights because they have their own rationality, their own logic, their own funding. You can't um, you can't um, make as if they were they were equal. They are different. The sources of funding, the rules applicable, are different. And the French CPA aim to connect or combine different social rights, which are not exclusive. And if I try to sum up my thoughts on the CPA, it would it, it can be um, the if we if we start from the idea that the rights are not the same and we have to combine in the CPA, CPA different rights. It means that if I take uh, Alain Supio's works, uh, Cercle Concentrique, I can start from one, um, one part, employees' rights, then you, will, you would have workers' rights and then social rights attached to the person. It means that it's not because you have we have created a CPA that writes social rights linked to the employee status have disappeared. They are still on, but you have to combine those different rights. And I think that is a future, that would be the future of the CPA. Uh, I hope it's, uh, I thank you for your attention and I'm sorry it's, uh, <laughs> It's very technical. I hope it's clear. It was clear for all of them, all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nicole. Thank you also for taking this challenge that I only gave you 20, 25 minutes to bring it all together. And you introduced also the, uh, the more philosophical side of the future of CPA. And um, it also, I think it exemplifies very well that we can have these grand ideas and we can make like, uh, you know, this, uh, like this, um, the circles uh, by Supio, uh, that they can sound very simple, but once we go into, uh, into implementing them, 
we are faced uh, with, um, with the path dependency of the previous systems. And there is a reason why, why things have evolved as they are. And even if the conditions have changed, it's uh, very difficult to, uh, to overturn them. And uh, I encourage everyone to also write your questions in the Q&A, but uh, I, will, I will ask first, I will use my uh, right as a mediator. And um, uh, coming back to the fact that uh, the personal account is effective and uh, is uh, working already, what is the general opinion of its uh, success by the uh, by the French themselves? Has it uh, started as it was intended, or um, how? What is the state at the moment? Unfortunately, or not, they don't know CPA. I think the French don't know the device. They know compte personnel de formation, uh, personal account for training of training. They know it because um, it opens rights and you can change easier, more easily uh, from an employment, from an, uh, a job to another. But I think they don't know, even don't know CPA, what is it? And French employers um, don't see in a very positive way the uh, account for prevention because it costs a lot of money. So um, I think it's just a start and the COVID, of course, crisis uh, stopped uh, the uh, changes. Okay, so it is it is an ongoing process. Mm. And I see also there are some, uh, some general things to think through in which direction it should evolve in the future, right? We don't know yet. We, we are waiting for um, uh, a reform, uh, changes on uh, a retirement pension scheme. Mm -hmm. Pension scheme. So I think all is linked, and the COVID uh, has stopped almost everything. We just uh, try to avoid the crisis. So now it's a little bit complicated in France, but. Um, we, we haven't a lot of uh, communication on the CPA. So now it's just standby, in standby. Okay. Um, I also have another question. Um, we have followed uh, this idea with strong interest for years, uh, ever since we had this employment, uh, uh, future of employment project. I'm wondering whether you have noticed other countries trying to either copy this idea of the CPA or attaching these rights to the, uh, to the person, or have you, have you noticed any other similar real life examples that go beyond this one type of, uh, one specific account like retirement or health or um, anything else that kind of, tackles the person's career model as, um, as a whole? I think it's very difficult to believe or to imagine that one device which has been created in a certain context, in a certain um, political context, history can be transferred to another country. Uh, we have very special legal framework, a mechanism for extension of collective agreement that put the state in the middle of the labor relationships. So I think it's very particular. It's uh, this combination between the, uh, the, the intervention of the state and a quite independence let given to the social partner to conduct the relationship. I think we have this combination between state intervention and the freedom of, for a social partner. And would it be relevant 
to transport to transfer this CPA abroad. I don't know. I, I know that other countries were or employers uh, from other countries were interested by um, account personnel de formation, uh, personnel account of training and or droit individuel à la formation before it was existing the individual right to training. They were interested. We had many employers from Germany who came in France to speak about those um, devices, but we, we, we can transfer a device in a whole device in uh, another country without taking into account specific specificities. Yes, yes, <laughs> I imagine. But I was thinking, like maybe hypothetically, or or whether there there has been yes interest. Thanks, thanks very much. I see there is one question for you at the moment. Maybe some more will come. If you have time to check Q and A, that would be wonderful. But uh, no pressure. We can also check it out afterwards. And now we have time for our two discussions uh, because, as Nicole mentioned, it's. Uh, very difficult to imagine these uh, specific ideas in the context of another country. And I'm very interested uh, to hear what uh, Rina has to say about it. Thank you. And thank uh, you to uh, the presenters. I think we have lost Elina, but uh, at least we can still uh, discuss with Nicole the, uh, the first, I don't know, ideas or... or uh, feedback. Uh, in general, is reforming our social security systems, whether it's uh, regarding to uh, uninsurance, uh, unemployment insurance or, or health care, it is necessary. We, we, otherwise, we can't respond to the, uh, the, the changing working uh, uh, world and the people's expectations and, and also have a resilient system in terms of our demographic uh, uh, changes. And, and I, I have to say that it's refreshing to, to actually have a debate that goes further than uh, changing the tax rate that is quite usual in, the, in, the, in Estonian politics. Uh, when we uh, look at the Estonian experience or what uh, is the potential for different type of savings accounts and what have we analyzed so far then this personal accounts have been analyzed in the context of healthcare and repeatedly analyzed but the conclusion has so far been that these personal savings accounts in health wouldn't solve any issues, whether it's additional financing that we need, long waiting times, the lack of nurses or anything. And one of the reasons is the distribution of healthcare costs that uh, um, in Estonia, for example, 10% of people spend more than two thirds of the cost yearly. And uh, the health status is, is correlated heavily with uh, your income, your educational level. Uh, so the ability to save uh, uh, is, is lower for those who actually might need the treatment who, or whose treatment costs are higher. Uh, and uh, savings accounts that do not spread risk across people, but only over time, uh, do, do not actually serve the purposes of, of the health insurance usually. Uh, uh, but uh, looking uh, to the future, these digital tools that enable more flexibility, uh, personal approach that are evidence-based or knowledge-based uh, uh, ways to nudge people may be in, in private sector service provision, we, we talk a lot about gamification uh, to uh, change people's behavior or motivate or, or provide incentives. So if we want in the public sector service provision, introduce the elements of gamification, we can discuss that. What is the problem we want to solve? Uh, what, what is the objective of an account? And uh, uh, would it be uh, mm, would it offer some kind of extra uh, mm, uh, 
like tools or or in, in terms of implementation uh, but uh, coming to the example nicole uh, uh, discussed the cpa i would say that for example estonian uh, unemployment insurance fund uses this so-called training card 2500 euros an unemployed person can choose uh, the trainings or, or what are needed to uh, improve the skills to, to find a better job or better paying job. So the element of CPI is something that has been uh, uh, working in Estonia for, for uh, several years by now. And also um, this e employment side to uh, motivate employers to uh, prevent uh, whether they are health issues or, or uh, some others. In Estonia, employers can um, uh, spend on uh, employees' health five, 400 euros per year without uh, paying certain taxes. So it's the second element from the French example that we have somehow implemented, but the accounts are not uh, personal or the um, employee uh, has less... Uh, uh, maybe impact than in case of the French CPI. Yeah. But um, uh, I, I found uh, personal and collective in interest that were combined in the example of CPA very interesting. Uh, because for me, uh, wh wherever we discuss personal accounts in, in incentivizing savings, it ultimately is the question of control, whether it's a personal decision to, to spend uh, something from the account or what, who sets the rules. If a person saves in, in his or her everyday life, for example, me, I'm totally free to choose where to spend my savings. With whatever type of account, the, the rules are tighter than uh, what are for my current savings. So this delegating this control over my saving to the state or, or employer or someone else uh, poses, I would say, philosophical questions for me. We, we say that uh, these personal accounts uh, are somehow liberal alternative to the current social security model. But at the same time, we, we take a lot of freedom from the person who saves and make them uh, a play according to the uh, rules set out and the, that are the same for, for everyone. And if we talk about the solutions that would be uh, implemented uh, EU-wide, uh, then the question is that how uh, much harmonization uh, in the unemployment insurance or pension insurance or health insurance uh, do we actually want and what is I apologize and what's the role for uh, uh, member state uh, uh, health policy or, or employment policy in the future uh, if the accounts are transferable and used uh, by the several, uh, same rules in, in every country and uh, um, I had one other, oh, about Elena's uh, presentation of life accounts. Uh, this, uh, what I found useful or something that uh, Estonia lacks so far is um, this um, payment for micro tasks. Uh, if a, a, phys a, physical, a person buys service from another person and would like to uh, pay a small amount it, that the amount actually is uh, taxable, but the, the tax declaration and the process is very bureaucratic. But if we want better tax compliance, we should have a very simple or automatic digital solution that en enables this type of payments or transfers uh, for uh, very like, small services or, um, or that, that are uh, traded or, or bought and sold between uh, micro entrepreneurs or, or uh, uh, persons. So, uh, 
And any questions, Johanna? Yes, I'm just wondering, um, continuing on your last thought about the micropayments and, and small services, I'm just thinking whether, well, Estonia has the entrepreneur account, which has um, um, evolved gradually over time and uh, quite some few thousand people use it. Could this be a solution here? Or um, to, like, I'm just uh, wondering whether, whether these solutions could also be very simple as our entrepreneurship account, or do we should we take on a more pre principle or like um, more wholesome change, change the whole system? I'm a fan of uh, entrepreneurial account, and I, I've often bought example uh, that I think it's a very useful in, in innovation, but uh, it, it's still. Uh, I would say it's meant for for uh, entrepreneurs or or people who actually regularly sell their services, but uh, any household that uh, uh, hires uh, or, or asks someone else to to uh, to some, some something in their household, whether it's for a couple of hours or for a certain task. I, I don't know whether it, they actually use the entrepreneurial account currently. It, it could be something, whether it's a, a payment with your or phone that you can mark, it's, it's for a service. You use your general bank, bank account, but certain payments with this tag are taxed according to set rules. So or something that don't require um, uh, registering a special status or opening a special account, uh, I, I would see uh, something that is uh, needed in addition to entrepreneurial account. But uh, I, uh, I would argue that the changes to entrepreneurial account or very wide use of it uh, could, could provide a, a very good alternative. Okay, uh, thank you, Rina. Meanwhile, I encourage everyone to pose your questions in Q&A. I also check them before we move on to the general discussion. But first, I will uh, now hand the floor over to Jan. Let's hear about your um, ideas and comments on the, on the previous presentation. Thank you. Do you hear me in a proper way? Hmm. No, right, great. Thank you for having a word here. Um, I was asked to comment all those um, thoughts that came before. Um, in Estonia, we do have our own idea of uh, a citizen account as well, um, but uh, deliberately I don't want to say a word about that because uh, my task was to, um, <clears throat> to try to um, add something to the presentations uh, before. Mm. I think overall, mm. I'm not going to show uh, any slides, but I tried to explain the system, uh, system of society, uh, how it is, how it's been like um, 10,000 years already. Um, and in every society, there is one uh, very important question is how to spread um, wealth or at least ability to live from those who are more successful to those who are less successful. And uh, this is called red distribution, the red distribution of wealth. And nowadays we, um, we measure it in, in terms of dollars, in terms of euros. And a lot of people dislike that term because um, they, they see it as an evil, but it's just a measurement. Um, in yesterday, what we want in a society is that those who are able to make um, the most uh, money, that means uh, those who are able to make uh, the most wealth, uh, part of that wealth is taken and given to those who, who for some reason, are not able to, uh, to make that money. Um, you know, let's say those people who are old enough that they can't work really, and the people who have some disabilities who can't, um, can't uh, work therefore and then we have unfortunately also a class of people who just prefer to sit on the coach and watch tv and they even don't try to get any work 
somehow we have to figure out in that complex society how we distribute the wealth uh, from um, from wealthy to to less wealthy. Um, in a way uh, that it it is efficient and in uh, very importantly in a way that's not going to destroy the economy as a whole. And if you look at the world now, um, I think I see that uh, there are very, some two very good models to compare. We, we see Europe as a, uh, where we have for last. 135 years, uh, we have uh, uh, the social security model governed by government um, and created by, by um, Councillor Bismarck. And um, then we have America, United States, that, I mean, Northern America, where, um, where the, um, there has been a quite brutal capitalism. And we see that both systems have the benefits and both uh, systems have their problems. And the problem with Europe is that it's not um, possible to continue that road for too much. Most investors don't believe in European enterprises. Uh, and that means after 30, 30 um, maybe 30, 30 years, we don't have enough people, enough wealth creation to pay the, the pensions of um, our old people. And well, in America, we see the big problem is that some of the people are not um, not involved in the social security network. They fall through. They become extremely poor, uh, extremely unhappy. Um, and a good thing I think is that um, nowadays, um, I think we, we we are able to achieve a society where there is a redistribution of wealth. But this redistribution is not going to harm the efficiency of economy. When I talk about the efficiency of economy, then I, uh, I say that um, most Americans live in a bigger house than most Europeans. Most Americans have um, more free cash than most Europeans. A GDP per capita in the United States is um, almost 50% higher. In terms of economical development, America is uh, 20 years, 25 years ahead of the best countries of Europe. So this is now, it, it started to happen like uh, during the 80s, during the 90s in the last century, but it's happening all the time. So obviously the European system is not sustainable while the American system is a little bit cruel, a little bit brutal to the, the poorest people. Yeah, so we need to find a kind of good compromise how to do that, and um, this is something that we um, we can't take the existing system um, that is in Europe in use in Europe, especially uh, when uh, when I heard uh, the presentation from Nicole. Uh, You've done a lot of good work there in France, thinking about how, how to do things in a better way. But you're constrained in your past, and you're constrained in your huge amount of laws and bureaucracy. Let's take an average citizen. I think 98, 99% of the laws nobody reads, except those people who made those laws, right? I've seen initiatives also in Estonia, okay, let's make an investment account so that the small investors can um, invest easily their money. And um, But I, I am a big investor. I've never used that because it's too complicated. Maybe I'm not the smartest guy in, on the planet. Uh, definitely I'm not, uh, I'm probably somewhere in average. But um, <clears throat> if you wanna build systems for a society that really work, then those systems have to be simple. So you have to overcome the fact that uh, everybody has to be planned centrally. Um, everybody knows central planning has never worked in history. Last, um, I think, um, country that wanted to, to centrally plan everything for the best benefit of the citizens was Soviet Union. And the, the result was that people were extremely poor. 
I think the best bands nowadays is, is in China, where the, they, they try to combine the central planning and free economy and the decisions of the people. And uh, this, this um, <clears throat> has a problem that the, somewhere they are not giving enough uh, liberal rights to the people. But I think nowadays we, what we can do is, yeah, we can actually um, realize the redistribution of wealth with some rather simple algorithms rather than having 100,000 government employees to do the redistribution of wealth. We can do it in a very simple way um, because we have now tools and technology that we didn't have 100 years ago. Um, I can say, um, well, maybe a, a good example is, um, just a, well, um, is that, you know, social ministry of affairs in Estonia, there are like 12,000 people working, 12,000 uh, government officials. They're all good people, very clever. Um, and uh, all they do is they distribute uh, the wealth. But sorry, distribution of wealth for 1.3 million people in Estonia can be done with this computer that I have here in, in my hand. Let's see if I move it, you see the computer, yeah? That's enough, that's enough processing power to do the distribution of wealth. And um, it can be done only in one way, not through the services to the, uh, to the citizens, but it can be done only um, by distributing money because money is a universal measurement of um, goods and services. Yeah. Uh, let's say pension here, let's take a, a typical person who receives the retirement income from the government. I would say my, my mother, who is 89, can uh, go to the shop and perfectly decide what, what she can do with her money. She can buy bread, she can buy those spaghettis, she can decide all over that. And, um, and um, what we should do actually in a wealth distribution is that we just have to distribute the wealth um, to the accounts, like life account or whatever account you call it. Uh, and um, we can actually do it directly because a thousand years ago, people actually distributed the wealth directly. They, they were sitting around one fireplace and distributed directly. But, but uh, nowadays we can do it uh, so that the government also has an eye. So if it, somebody receives free money from the society uh, gathered by taxes, and uh, then this, so that person will receive that money on account and um, I completely agree with the Finnish model. Um, it is um, universal. Um, you have to give people back the freedom that the government took away from people when they initiated this, the system of social security that is not general in Europe. Actually, this move was done because uh, the leaders of that time, they wanted to make sure that they stay on power. Obviously, if you spread money, then it's very easy to stay in power, right? <laughs> Rina wants to say, uh, and I got argue with me, that's great. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I, will, I can stop now because my time is probably over. Nowadays, we can give indeed to the accounts, to personal accounts uh, that are a little bit transparent to the government. We can see how we distribute the wealth in the, in the society and uh, we have to let people decide how they use the money. And if we really start seeing that they use the money in a stupid way, then we can make, put some restricts on these accounts. And this is very easy nowadays. I used to be programmed 30 years ago. I can do these restricts myself. It's every, every programmer can do that. Okay, uh, thank you, Jan, uh, for presenting this. Uh, I would even say it's a very clear vision that you that you have, and I think it uh, adds uh, nicely to, uh, to the variety of uh, of views on this topic of accounts. And of course, 
it's unfair from us to actually devote only 1.5 hours to these different types and, and uh, understandings of, of the accounts. But I do have a question to you. And my question concerns uh, partly what Elena was talking about, that people move, they travel, even if they don't do it physically, we can increasingly work uh, from, from Estonia to uh, for, a, for a company in the States. Have you thought about uh, this kind of global employment uh, workforce? Uh, how, how, what, what even can be the role of the government and, and the accounts? And uh, can it, um, wouldn't it actually happen that these people who have this ability to choose their location, they will just go there where uh, this um, uh, the income on their accounts is the highest, or they would just teach uh, opt out uh, from the social security system of their country if they see that it's a stupid one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, the the harsh reality today that the people are opting out actually from social security systems. And exactly those people who are able to pay the highest taxes. I see it in my um, companies. Mm -hmm. Then, then those people are not coming to Estonia because they see that they, uh, their net salaries will be lower because the most of the taxation is based on labor. Uh, and if they go to Bora Bora, they can just um, present an invoice and get the money and pay, don't pay the tax at all. And um, even if you're in a developed country like UK or, or US, the taxation on labor is lower radically lower than in Europe. And this is, I think, for the Europe, the key question is to, to lower radically the taxation on labor and raise the other taxes and make the system efficient so that all the taxes will be overall lower. That's the only solution that could save Europe in the long run, like um, 30 years, 50 years. That's uh, because, um, um, oh, everything behind that life account uh, thing is that um, labor is being replaced by investments, by capital. In the past, everything was manual labor. Everybody worked hard with their hands and sometimes with their heads. But nowadays, most people work with their heads and a lot of people are actually not working even not with their kind of heads only, but they have some investments, some capital. Let's say, just a couple of weeks ago, we, we sold Helmus shares to our employees in Helmus. Almost everybody bought shares. Just there was maybe one person who didn't buy out of thousand. Yeah. And that means um, work and capital is going to be mixed. And it's going to be mixed in smart individuals. And that's why. The sm these smart individuals sh should have the possibility to build businesses without bureaucracy, to, uh, to use their money um, quite freely uh, and, um, and um, today nowadays indeed it's easier in Bora Bora than in Estonia. If I had to start a new business in now, uh, I wouldn't start in the European Union. Never. Sorry, okay. but it's true. <clears throat> it seems like uh, we have grand challenges ahead. Um, unfortunately, we only have five more minutes. I would uh, very much like to give also Nicole and Rina a very brief uh, chance to reflect once more on these uh, these ideas. First, Nicole. Well, if 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 there is anything you now wish to add or or conclude in this uh, this webinar. Oh, I think uh, Jean is very pessimist. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not as pessimist as he is. Uh, yes, of course, there is a bureaucratic system and 99% um, of law are non-read. But uh, if I want to build my house, I won't be able to do it by myself. It doesn't mean that we have to know the law. Uh, it's um, it's uh, a job. So I think. Globalization has made the system more complex and uh, 
we have in France uh, today political party that try to explain people that it's very simple. No, it's not simple. And trade unions, employers' organization, or what we call in France, corps intermédiaire. I don't know how to translate. Um, corps intermédiaire association. They are, they have a utility. They have a, a role to play, to explain to conductors, to support people. It's the role. So I think uh, the problem is if you postulate that it's enough to give rights, social rights to people, and then they will use it naturally. No, it's not like this. In France, we have many, many studies since a long time, which shows that concerning training, the more you, have, you are qualified and the easier you can use then in your lifelong uh, training. So it means that assets, assets based system is not working. You have to support people, to guide some people, to lead. So I think it's uh, quite a liberal point of view that shows that uh, the individual is not capable to use social rights if he is alone or you are. Uh, recreate, you are going to recreate the same inequality, the one who are capable, who are, who can use the devices will do it, the other one won't. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, Nicole. Good morning. Yeah, thank you. I only add one thing. It is also important to have social responsibility. Social rights are mentioned everywhere by every populist. But social rights means that there has to be also social responsibility, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's very good comment. Okay, um, we now have final two minutes, Rina. Uh, I, I have uh, three things to, to comment on. I try to be very brief, but first, uh, I, uh, I could be the one person in Helmes who doesn't uh, want the shares I've never bought a single share. I have my second and third pillar pensions, so people who know what to buy and how to invest can do it for me. Uh, but um, when we uh, talk about very comprehensive accounts, as Jan described, it means that people use the accounts for, for services and, and goods that are not covered to, uh, through our current social security system that is not very generous in Estonia, so, so many things are not covered. So it means that the savings rate has to be much higher than the current tax rate. So this yeah. is something that, that uh, people think that if we have a 10% or 20% uh, income going to the account, this, this would cover everything I need. But we are talking about much larger figures of right. saving. And uh, the other thing that, that worries me that I, I actually included in my comment as well is the control over a person's life. As Jan described, that it's very simple to program something to control my uh, uh, the use of money. Well, if I do a wrong spending decision, uh, my, my account is restricted or something like this. And this is what bothers me. Currently, I have, a, a, this is my choice, whether I, I will apply for the unemployment uh, uh, benefit, for example, or whether do I want the training card and, uh, um, uh, and, and uh, upgrade my skills. If I don't, I, I right. would have to take it, yeah. Those are the cases we can trust people and we should trust people, but there are some rare cases like, let's say, if the parents have an account uh, to send their kids to school and actually they use the money on account to uh, drink beer, then you have the, to have those restrictions on, on those accounts. So that's, it's the only reason why you should have accounts, otherwise you can, we can just live um, without government information, right? There's some few people and, who misuse the system, yeah? that's why we need those accounts. <laughs> and, and the last comment is, is uh, uh, healthcare specific again. Uh, we actually need very well-functioning markets. 
uh, in order for, for this YAS type of account to, uh, to give a full benefit. Uh, but for example, in healthcare, if a person uh, has chest pain for the first time and he gets uh, 50 euros, he can decide whether to visit his GP, uh, a cardiologist or go to an emergency room. Uh, in, in visiting GP, it's just the 50 euros. They don't have to pay anything extra. But very few people actually would uh, uh, choose the option to visit the GP. They would go to a cardiologist and pay an extra uh, 50 euros from their own pocket or go to an emergency room and uh, pay 250 euros extra uh, to get an answer. So people's behavior, it's, it's not medically reasonable. And yeah. the, the, that's why we need insurance. Yeah, I agree. Insurance yeah. is again that the insurance and the redistribution of wealth should be kept separate because there are areas where they are kind of counter working to each other. So that's why insurance system must still exist. Like it, it, there is in most countries, like in Estonia, Haigagasa is, uh, is providing the insurance. And this has to remain separately. Otherwise, if they if you try to put them in one account together, that's not going to work. It's like of wheels and the steering wheel in a car. They have to be both there, otherwise the car doesn't run. Yes, that's that's what I wanted to say. That we want medically sound behaviors and decisions in healthcare, not decisions that I make based on uh, the amount I have saved or what are the rules uh, Jan has set for my account. <laughs> yeah, sure, absolutely. Thank you very much. Uh, I see new topics for new webinars rolling out, and I think we could continue this discussion for a long time. Unfortunately, uh, I have promised to uh, end the webinar at 2.30, and we're a bit over time already. So my big gratitude goes out to Nicole, Jan, Rina. Irina is not with us anymore, unfortunately, but uh, this, uh, these presentations and, and the discussion is very uh, extremely interesting. And um, I'm also planning to write um, a short uh, follow up on the topic of accounts into the blog of uh, the Foresight Center, which will be unfortunately in Estonian, but I will definitely share it with all of you because it's such a big topic and it's actually difficult to grasp, it's, you know, like the elephant that you don't understand what is it exactly. Uh, so um, let's see where this topic goes in the, uh, in the upcoming times and uh, maybe we'll come back to it uh, at Foresight Center in the future. Thank you very much for giving your time contribution and uh, thank you everyone for listening. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. bye. Bye. Bye, thank you. Bye.